So you know these magical potion bottles that people make? You see them all over the place. They're filled with a colored liquid with some glitter inside, and the coolest part is when you give them a swirl, it almost looks like there's this magic storm happening inside. It's a magic like storm? Magic storm. That is so... <laughs> Can that be a project we make? Yes. <laughs> There's a bunch of different ways you can make these. We're gonna show you our favorite way to do it, but we're gonna take it even further. The obvious coolest thing about this is that when you swirl it, you get the, you know, the magical storm. Problem is, if you just leave it alone for 10 seconds, the storm calms. <laughs> what if you could make it do it all by itself though? Like real magic. <laughs> what if you could put this down and it just starts swirling and creates like a perpetual magical storm of awesomeness? Like you're a real wizard? Yeah, basically. So we found this cool crystal ball prop, which kind of does the same thing. When you turn it on, it lights up and swirls all by itself. So we thought, what if we could combine this with this. Without all of this. <laughs> with we don't need her. <laughs> to make your potion, you need three basic things. You need a liquid, you need mica powder, and you need some food coloring. Basically your liquid goes in a bottle, preferably a cool looking bottle like this. You color it some color, you know, with your food coloring. And then mica powder, which is basically this ultra fine pigment, like a dusty type stuff, goes in there, swirl, make magic potion. For the liquid part, you can do it two ways. You can use alcohol or you can use glycerin and water. They both work great, but for our project, we want to use the glycerin and water. Also, it's rubbing alcohol, not like tequila. Don't put tequila in your thing. <laughs> but that would make the best potion. Actually, you probably should, no, just. Don't drink your potion, do not do tequila in, do not put vodka in. Isopropyl alcohol, 70%. That's the one. But we're not even using that. What Although is... I did hear you could make edible potions with like luster dust instead of mica powder. Magic potion cocktails. That's the next video. <laughs> this stuff though, glycerin, you just get it at the grocery store. Super easy to get. Grab some next time you're out. This is gonna make perfect spinning potions. Now we don't want the liquid to be too opaque because then you won't see the glitter. So for the food coloring, it kind of depends on the brand. This one, we needed a drop, but if you're using something more intense like a gel food coloring, just go really slow at first. And then for the mica powder as well, you put too much in, goes too opaque. So again, start slow with it and you can always add more. For the glycerin, we just added a couple squirts at first, but you may need to add more. We'll get to that part of it a little bit later. Now we get to figure out how to make it spin all by itself. Now we did a lot of testing and we came up with a way to do this that every single one of you can do at home. It might seem a little complicated at first, but trust me, it's not. Just watch all the way through and you'll see how easy it actually is. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a magnet and we're gonna drop it in. And then I'm gonna take another magnet and go like this. So using one magnet, I can move the other magnet inside the bottle, which is pretty cool, right? But we need it to move all by itself. That's where this little guy comes in. This is a tiny little motor connected to just a AA battery. Now what do you suppose would happen if I took a magnet and I stuck it on the motor like that and turn it on? We get this. So the motor is spinning around and that throws the other magnet all over the place. The motor and the battery go together with no tools at all and you can get them for just a couple dollars. So there's nothing hard here. These little push-in wire connectors make it a total no-brainer. You just push in the wires and you're good to go. To put the magnet on the motor, we actually use a quarter. We just hot glued a little nut to the bottom of the quarter and then this gets placed onto the motor shaft. And then we hot glued the magnets to the outside of the quarter so it makes a wider spin. For inside the bottle, we came up with this cool little hot glue thing. You make a little puddle, stand up a magnet in it, and then make another puddle on the other side. It ends up looking something like this. The flat glue helps it stay upright and the wide spin from the quarter helps it stay centered. This creates a nice spin and these two little tricks combined will allow this to work on almost any shape of bottle. The plan is to hide our motor and our battery pack inside of a book. So this is a book we got at a thrift store and we gave it our magic spill book texture. It looks really cool now. So we'll have the motor inside the book, then you can put your potion bottle on top of the book. It'll do its spinny thing and then we can dress up the book with some cool like arcane stuff, like this crow skull we found. And there you go. That's gonna look awesome. We're gonna put our potion bottle right here. You're gonna take a quarter, and we're gonna put it on our mark, and we're gonna trace around the outside of the quarter. And that's gonna give us the space that we have to cut out from our book cover. Once you got it all the way through, pop your circle out like that. It doesn't have to be perfectly round. In fact, it's better if it's a little bit bigger than your quarter. You just wanna make sure that it's not too big, that your bottle doesn't cover it up. Next, we're gonna trace the hole. And now, I just need to mark a space that's big enough to fit the motor and the batteries. The last thing before we start cutting these pages out, we just have to know how tall our little motor setup is. So I'm gonna go just under an inch and a half. You can always add more height by putting a couple more magnets on this. So it's better to make the hole a little bit deeper. 
So I've got my square here. Now I just have to keep cutting until I get down to the depth that I'm after. Before we glue the motor in, we're gonna glue a couple of the pages together. So that way it creates more of a stable surface. Cause if it's only on one page, the page kind of slides around. We're just gonna use Mod Podge. This was tinted black because it was for another project. So ignore that, but usually it's white. <laughs> the glue is dry. Now we can put the motor and battery in and start putting it together. So we drew a circle to show where the motor's gonna go. We're gonna put a couple dabs of hot glue to hold the motor in place. And then we're gonna secure it more after. Once it's dry, take your battery pack and we'll just tuck it in. Make sure the wires are out of the way. Hit the switch, bam. If everything's put in the right spot, it'll make zero noise. Finally, we're gonna take our little homemade magnet spinny thing and we're gonna drop it in. Time to test it out. Remember how we said we like to use the glycerin instead of the alcohol? Well, that's because as it thickens the liquid, it slows down how fast it spins. So if you make this and it spins really fast, all you gotta do is put more of this stuff in and it slows it down and you can totally customize it to look any way you want. Okay, last thing, and I just thought of this, I wish we had thought of it earlier. If you cut your hole before you do the tissue paper treatment, you could actually tissue paper over the hole and your hole could be completely hidden and the magnet would still work. We always think of these things after. <laughs> Finish. Well, you guys could try it out when you make yours. Let us know how it works. If you like these kind of projects, there's a whole playlist of them right down there, so check those out. Thanks for watching. Until next time, stay wicked.